Hello, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and today we're going to have a look at Bailador. It's a very good uh, day for Bailador because a lot of things have come together here at once that we've been working on for a long time. Now, just to get this horse to walk around the ring like you're seeing here with him stretched all the way down without spooking uh, every 10 feet has been um, a challenge at best. And uh, But he's come a long, long way since the days of him spooking all the time, and uh, now we're down to just being able to have a normal, correct ride on this horse without a lot of um, extra stuff. Now, we did warm him up on the lunge uh, before I started this work, so he warmed up for about 10 minutes maybe uh, in the shambo. Just get him stretching over his back, because remember, I'm very, very careful with this horse's back. Now, what had happened in the past is that every time we start schooling him much in the canter, we've gotten him to really good places before, and then we start cantering, his back would get sore. So, which is also part of why I have Amber riding him, as you see, that I just kind of backed off the weight a little bit, and he seems definitely much happier. Now, once I school him for a while with Amber on him, hopefully I'll be able to get back on and uh, once again and not have that difficulty with him, that is, his back getting sore again. So, in other words, we're just gradually building up his back and putting less weight on it for that very reason. And, uh, and he does seem happier about all that, because he's a horse that, if he's in pain, he's going to tell you. And I think this may be the first time we've ever had him completely out of pain, and he's just going wonderfully. And so we've never seen this kind of, rela of relaxation out of him before, where you could just walk around the ring on a loose rein. He's really come to a really good place. That's why I called this one getting in the zone, because it's for me, for the first time, this horse is really getting in the zone, where he's just not bothered by everything. He's just letting himself relax and get into the work, and, and nothing is a major deal for him. And that's exactly what we want to have happen. In other words, he's finally getting fun to ride. Now, you'll notice that he's not in the shambone here being ridden, and he's also just back in a snaffle bridle. Now, for the first couple of years with this horse, we rode him in a double bridle only because he was a very, very confirmed spooker and, and would spook very violently and try to jump out from underneath you. And, uh, and certainly the only thing that probably saved him from being as dangerous as he might have been, his back was so weak that he couldn't actually get... He tried to buck a little bit, but he really couldn't, couldn't use his back much. But... Uh, He's really come around now, but there's nothing worse than trying to be on a horse that's just trying to jump out of its skin like every every 10 minutes, uh, or 10 minutes of every 10 steps, rather. So for us, this feels really good. Here he is doing a little shoulder in down the long side, completely in a stretch. And just staying really relaxed, ears very floppy. And once again, the interesting thing, too, is that in this last month... Um, which I'm sure his owner will notice here. He's really started to put on flesh really nicely. The summer's always been very hard on this horse, and we got him going really quite well this summer. Then he got a little bit, about a month ago, got in uh, what turned out to be a fungal infection in just a little tiny cut, and that uh, ended up with him having a, a sore hock for uh, about a week or so, and we had to go back and sort of start all over again. But it hasn't taken too long, and now that's all in good shape. And... Uh, He's right back on track again. But it was interesting because he, we had him in a really relaxed state and then he got this little sore, which you wouldn't think was much, you know, looking at it in the beginning. But he automatically started the thing of the ears pinned back and just getting very angry and this sort of thing. So um, he's a horse that just needs to know he's not going to be subject to any pain and he's a happy guy. So just have this big, long, swinging walk, walk like we see here. And if you go back and look at some of the previous videos of this horse you know, from early on when we first started him, the beautiful thing here is now the neck is no longer broken. When I first started this horse, if you took any contact at all, he just broke at the third vertebrae. He'd been draw rein so much that he was just completely overflexed in the neck. So now we see that finally happening. We're getting them up into working gates, meaning not just in the stretch. Remember, at first what we're trying to do is get horses over their backs in the stretch. And then gradually it's, uh, we bring the pole up, and that's when we develop the working gates. So that is where they can hold their head and neck a little higher and not have to be so stretched and maintain the position of the back. So that's what we're beginning to be able to get with him. And you can also see how soft his mouth looks, how a nice foamy uh, mouth he has there. He was always a horse with a very dry mouth and very busy. He was a very angry boy for a long time, but he finally looks like he's having a good time and enjoying the ride, coming out and working and, and not dreading it. So all good, as we say. And once again, if you see how much more he's developed, you can see the top line beginning to come along his neck now. So instead of having just that bottom part of the neck, you see how his neck is starting to thicken. And also, if you look here, even compared to the video of this horse from uh, like a month ago, you'll see how much uh, flatter he is now behind the saddle. He had really started to drop away from the saddle there again. And uh, so he's come a little ways and brought that back up again, and it's looking really good. 
So you can see how Amber just works to maintain a steady contact with the horse with both reins. Once again, we're not trying to equitate on a horse at this level. We're just trying to get the horse to take contact and stretch it down. So sometimes we use that technique of widening our hands a little bit. Because remember, the stretch is not riding on a loose rein. It's riding in, in the correct contact, tact, which is slightly more than the weight of the rein or the weight of the rein. And the horse should respond to it, as you see him doing here. When I started this horse, he was one of the heaviest horses I have ever seen in my life. I mean, I, I've never felt a horse pull as hard as this horse was pulling on my arms the first time I rode him. So he's come a long way since then, and he's a lot happier about the work that he's doing. And I feel like we're really right on track now. As you can see, you can now have a ride on the horse. He can come out, and you're not just, you know, every step trying to keep yourself from uh, getting dumped. And there's nothing fun about riding a horse like that. And there's no need to, because when we train horses correctly, they don't hate the work, and they don't start looking for some reason to get rid of the rider. In fact, they get to a point where they start really enjoying it. Now, you can see how, how Amber just brought her shoulders way back there for a moment to help him engage. That is not what she's doing when you see us do that. We're actually lightening our seat, so we're displacing the load back a little bit, but off of the seat bones. So, in other words, we're, we're, we're not sitting directly on that part of the back that we're trying to get to lift. So once it comes back up, then we can sit up straight. Now she can sit up on top of the ball, as you see there. And once again, look behind the saddle there. And once again, if you compare this with the video that I took only a month or so ago, you'll see that that hole has really come up and really filled out. Really nice walk here, stretching deep into the contact. You know, and this is how we want to keep, you know, schooling horses. At every level, there's no need. This idea that horses have to be, you know, half crazy to do dressage is just uh, wrong thinking. And it's not really what, you know, everyone's heard the word impulsion. Impulsion is not nervousness at all. It has nothing to do with nerves. Impulsion is the horse internalizing its level of physical conditioning that where everything is just easy for the horse and it can do what it needs to do and you, you can feel that that sense of like when you when you're on a horse that's correctly trained and you want to do a lengthening, the, re, the lengthening comes from just releasing your seat a little bit or releasing your back or taking a little longer stroke in the rising trot if you're doing so. And you can see still how in this direction he still has a little tendency to want to crank that neck over to the side a little bit, but she gets him straightened right back out and right back in the stretch again. He's been only always difficult this horse when you start to move him away. So once again, when you when we have real impulsion, you see how she can get to the point here with him when he just stretches and he just stays there and moves along without a lot of intervening. That's what real impulsion is. And so I, you turn it on and it keeps internalizing itself. I've seen uh, some diagrams which kind of feel like that a little bit. Once again, it's that sense of the wave. I like to explain it that way. When you get it up, it's like a wave that's just formed behind a surfer. And you're, But the beauty, once again, on a horse is that it doesn't break down. You can see him getting a little bit resistive right there. It's always that, those leg things going into the bend. And you see how he gets a little bit wanting to crank his neck a little one way or the other. And then she just lets him right back out again. So sometimes we have to take a little more. And once again, when we have a horse like this who's been broken in the neck, you know, we always walk that fine line of we have to take contact, but yet, you know, we have to get the horse to move a little bit. So if we have to have a little more flexion in the neck than I want, that's okay for a moment as long as we got what we want, and we're going to let him right back out again, as you see, she, as you see she does here. But that's also the problem. Whenever you have horses that have been broken in the neck, remember what they really are is behind the leg. So we have to get them moving much more ahead of the leg and swinging. Once again, get that sense of impulsion that is energy that's completing itself and moving through the horse in a nice steady rhythm. So all good in the walk there for him just to be able to walk for 10 minutes like that and just stretch out and uh, not look at anything in the ring. There's people going by this sort of thing and go right into a stretch like this. And we can look and see how much this has slowed down and how deep the trot is. Look how deep the flexion is in his hocks. Once again, so this horse uh, has nothing wrong with his hocks. His problems were always in his back. And when his back is in the correct position, you see how easily he can flex the hocks. But once again, the big takeaway here for him today is just how even and steady that is. You can see him starting to lift off the ground. And that's the thing to remember what real collection is. Well, real collection is the horse lowering its hind legs and having so much thrust that it actually pushes the hind, it thrusts the forehand up into the air, which is very different from phony collection, which is a horse bringing its knees up high. So again, you know, um, and essentially, remember those horses they were first copying, you know, when, we, when people started seeing dressage, a lot of the older breeds, like the Lippers Honors and Lusitanos and Andalusians and things like that, the people used for dressage, 
had a much higher knee set. They had a much more natural knee set. So, you know, if you try to copy that with a horse like this, who's built more like a thoroughbred, as most modern sport horses are, they're kind of a combination of those older horses and, and the racing horses that we've had. But look how nicely he's bouncing off the ground here. You can see, and once again, notice how it makes no difference you know, where the head and neck is in the sense that, once again, a horse can be off its forehand with its head all the way down, as you see this horse is. If I pulled this horse's head up and hollowed it, I guarantee you he would be much more on the forehand than he is here. But you can see how the forehand is being lifted now by the hindquarters. Look how even and level he continues to come through behind. And once again, look at the floppy ears and the eyes and how easy he just goes down the long side. Even a couple of months ago, this was impossible with this horse. But now he's getting to the point where we can school him. He's done enough work. We have, you know, in other words, the work has become habitual. He's learned the job. This is what I have to do, you know, and we always keep the job within the realm of what the horse can do. And once again, this was a very big horse, and that's why, you know, I feel he ended up the way he ended up, because most people have no idea how to school a horse of this size or are, or are themselves athletic enough to be able to move with a horse of this size. So you have to be very athletic, or otherwise what you'll end up doing, especially if the horse is hollow, you'll end up just holding it back all the time. Now, interestingly enough, it'll be much easier to ride once he gets like this. Now, once again, look how beautiful that is. He's on the weight of the rein. Hasn't even flicked an ear there. Eyeballs completely relaxed. Tail nice and swinging now. And look at how he's bouncing off the ground. You can see there's a little bit of lift in the stride. But once again, if you take your hand and block the neck, so you didn't see the neck at all with this idea about when they're on the forehand or not, and you block the neck and just look at the horse moving, it doesn't look like it's on the forehand. It looks like it's lifting up off the ground a little bit now. So that's when we begin to develop real working gates now. I feel like this horse is finally at the point where he's developing working gates. And once again, it's, you can't develop collection without working gates first. It's the working gates, that's why they call them that, that develop the strength through the work to begin to collect. How nice and even he flows along here. Once again, look at the hole behind the saddle. That's a huge improvement over the, just even the last video that we saw of him. Deep in the stretch, flowing through the corners. Once again, look how nice and relaxed those ears are. He's not paying attention to anything at all. Except the riders, people going by. How beautiful that is, slow and deep. Now that's what we want it to be. Remember, we're always looking for that stride that is the longest step in the slowest stride. And then from that, we begin to get thrust. That is the horse thrust, meaning to the degree to which the hind legs thrust the forehand up into the air because they push off the ground, which you can see him starting to do. Look how perfect those hocks are moving now. Remember when we started this horse, he used to stand in his inside. His left hock would just stand there and shake. His leg would shake. He, he was just so weak across his back. And I think that was a lot from soreness across his loin. Happily, we had some really good chiropractors who helped us along the way here with this horse. Uh, Dr. Robson helped this horse a great deal, as did Chantel Perel and Dr. Kim Sargent as well. You know, it's just like yourself. If you're in pain, you can't work out. You know, that's what, the biggest thing. If you can find a way around the pain and you can work so that nothing hurts, then you can continue to work out. And that's often what we do with ourselves and also with horses themselves. But we've got to get into that place where we can find a place where this horse is finally in a good place where I think nothing is bothering him here. And once again, see how easily we come back and forth between the stretch. And he still can't maintain it. He's just beginning. Now I'm just beginning to ask him to start maintaining a working trot. That is to keep the pole up. But he still needs many moments of this stretch. And look how even that is. And look how every time we stretch him, he actually comes back better. So he starts to bring his pole back up right there, so we begin to develop the working trot. And this is how a horse like this must be worked. Really nice and even there and a good working trot. Now notice he brought his pole up and it didn't really overly affect the back. That is the back legs continue to swing under like that. Look how completely steady he is on the bridle right there, top of the neck. This is a horse with a great deal of potential, but I said due to his size, he was, had just been crammed into a very small short frame. Look how beautiful that is, literally floating over the ground right there. No resistance. Stretching all the way back down. Now we have a horse that someone can start to do something with and have a good time. It's what we're always looking for. Remember, remember riding should be fun above all else. I'm always amazed when I see 
how many people today don't really seem like they're enjoying it very much and nor do their horses. So I wonder why do they do it? Because it doesn't have to be that way. As you see, even a horse like this can learn to work very quietly. Now right there is his working trot. See how she was able to bring his pole up and the trot did not change whatsoever. No resistance, no change in the gait. So now we can say this horse is developing true working gait up from the stretch. And we ask him to hold it for a while, then we let him right back down in the stretch again. Really nice lateral movement there, moving really nicely away from the right leg. Notice when she put her ears on, he didn't pin his legs back. This was a horse when we started him. If you put your legs on the horse, especially if you put your left leg on him, he would basically go crazy. But he's now accepting the contact with the legs, beautifully into the stretch. And once again, look how moist the mouth is. There's a nice foamy mouth in a snaffle bridle. So we could say at this point, I feel like this horse has a good foundation. But we have to keep doing the same things and then build on that foundation. You know, what you have to realize is that there is never a point that we don't stretch horses. They all need that warm-up, just like you and I do. You know, if you start working out a lot without stretching, I guarantee you, you'll either become very, very stiff or you'll hurt yourself. Well, horses are the same way. If they don't stretch, if they don't use their muscles correctly, they're going to hurt themselves. So once again, you have to think of what we do as kind of, it's very similar to Pilates. It's just the Pilates for a four-legged creature rather than a two. But the same principles apply of, of engaging the core. Look how engaged this horse is to his core. And by virtue of it, look how the hole behind the saddle is no longer there and how even his stride has been. And she brings him back up into the working trot again. Right there, no big change to the stride. He's able to maintain it quite nicely on the weight of the rein. And now we're going to do a little bit of canter. So you see how he didn't resist that canter? He didn't suck back. He went right into a nice canter. Now there's somebody coming around the corner there. And he kind of looked a little bit, but that was no big deal for him. Came right back into it very nicely. Look how uphill the canner looks here and how slow and how light it is on the way to the rain. Very, very nice. And back to the trot. So we don't expect him to hold that for a really long time. Wonderfully all the way back down in the stretch. How easy that was from the canner. Now easily change across the diagonal, no change of rhythm, no change of the contact. And now she'll let him back down in the stretch. So once again, we don't expect him to hold that maximum trot for very long. Any more than you would go to the gym and lift the highest weight that you could do endlessly. You can't. This horse is the same way. It has to warm up. It has to work gradually up to its highest level of of physical effort and then it has to warm back down just like a person. It's as simple as that. But of course with that you have to be sure you're working this right set of muscles. Now look how beautifully he's moving there. Stays up in the working trot and into a very nice canter on the left lead. Now this was the left lead that was very very difficult. But he didn't throw his head, he didn't suck back, kept the neck out long, has a lovely uphill canter just like that. Look how relaxed he stayed throughout that canter and back into the stretch. So you can see how everything we did here today was just to build up to those little periods of canter and then from there we'll just build that up a little more and a little more. Pretty soon he'll be able to uh, do a full dressage test and all the canter work that goes in it. 
when we get him strong enough, I've done flying changes and things like that with this horse, but once again, he was so agitated that every time he tried to do anything like that, he would just, um, he would stiffen his back so, so much that it really was impossible and really just made his back sore, so there really was no point in doing it. But now he'll be able to start doing all these kinds of things. And once again, look how evenly he's swinging. Look how light in the bridle, how completely relaxed. Very nice work. Now we're going to even do a little sitting trot here. So you can see he's able to stay up. She's able to stay in the sitting trot. Wants to hollow a little bit right there, so we quickly come back to this trot. So not only are we going to gradually build up the work in the canter, we're also going to build up now the sitting trot, because he finally has enough back that we can do that a little bit. But look how we go right back into the stretch after that, because we don't want to take any chances. It's always better with horses to err on the side of caution when it comes to how much we do. And just remember that, you know, when you ride a horse that's not over the back, you're, you have no shock absorbers on the horse, so everything is going to be very difficult on it. That's why, you know, for instance, we don't canter a horse that doesn't, can't work over its back. We don't even go into a trot till the horse is working over the back in the walk. And then when you do it that way, you end up with a lot less uh, veterinary bills. In other words, just do everything slowly and gradually. Biggest problem with everybody today is they're just all in a big hurry. That's the problem of the modern world, right? But what riding ought to do for all of us is show us this other, that there is another kind of world. Now look how beautifully she's able to sit to the trot here. Maintain that really nicely. He stays up there and continues to trot beautifully. No change really. Very nice. And then we come right back to the stretch. And look how he doesn't miss a beat throughout. So it's been a long, hard road to get to this place with this horse, but I feel like for the first time, this was the first day that I would say I've ever felt this horse working completely in the zone. It's been coming. We've had some close days to this, but never one as good as this. I mean, this was a day he just came out and just did not put a foot wrong. He looked at one little thing in that corner there when we started. Uh, the canner there for just one moment came right back around and didn't pay any attention to it at all. When I started this horse, if he spooked at something once, he would spook at it for the next hour and a half, <laughs> you know, over and over again. So this so, so shows such a complete change in the mental attitude of the horse. Now you have a horse that would be enjoyable to ride and work, and look how easily he does all this without any resistance. So once again, Look how lovely he's lifting up in front, beginning to develop self-carriage, how light the reins are. Exactly what we're looking for him to do. You can even see that nice little bounce as he goes down the long side. Look how much that soft flexion in the hocks. That's what we're looking for, not tense. When we see horses that have been forced against the rein, they always have this, this kind of jerky tension. Instead of like we see here, it looks round, it looks easy and soft. When you see horses do these extreme extensions and things that are really hollow out behind, you see them throw that. It always has this kind of uh, accentuated thing that people think is cadence, but that isn't really cadence. That's just a horse bracing against the ground with its front legs. So it should always look like this, right up through the levels. It should always continue to maintain this soft lightness. As the horse developed, it simply, as it develops, it simply can do more. It can come up higher. So that was a beautiful ride. Amber did a wonderful job on him. And once again, I feel like the first day he was completely in the zone. So this is Will Faber from Art to, Art to Ride with my associate trainer, Amber Matusik, and Leslie's Wonder Boy, Bailador. We look forward to seeing you all very soon. Enjoy your Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays from Art to Ride.